outcome of, of this. Mm. I was just trying to figure like what my next thing was going to be. And then when I saw that note, mm. I said, yep, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. It was like the universe trying to get me back on track because I started going into other areas to make money. And then it was almost like the universe said, you want to make movies and you've said it, you've asked for it, and we got to mess up your hands in order to teach you that you are not on the track that you asked to be. Really? We got to put you back on track. Yeah. So that's when I looked at it. And I said, okay, I'm going. I'm doing it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I've got to answer the call. And... I'm going back to Liz Acar for the next quote. How uh, getting out of this state of funk or whatever and getting back to your art, how it actually does a physiological change to your body when you get out of that stress state and back into your creative flow. You know, when you, when you get out of that perpetual stress state, which physiologically and literally brain-wise does not support that change, right. This allows us to shift and, you know, we, we circle back around to that creative. That's one thing that that creative part of us, it helps us to calm down and to get present mm -hmm. yeah. and to start calming our system down, start shifting our physiology. It starts shifting our brain chemistry, starts shifting our neuro, you know, the neuroplasticity. We start creating new wires and Creativity is such a beautiful way to do it. So it, it circles back around to even the artist does matter. And mm. we're all inner artists if we just tap into it in our own way. And it's healing. And it's healing for others when we share it. So, mm. yeah. And I go to another one of my favorite guests, Mig Ayesa, also referred to me by Ann Davis. He's an actor, performer, singer, rock star. And sometimes there's days where you're not feeling as motivated to do stuff. And here he talks about having to push yourself and knowing that this is a business once you're in it like that, that you have to do certain things. And he explains how he gets through it. And I, I, I really try to be as creative as possible. Sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes you wake up and you go, oh, God, I'm, I'm mm. tired of hustling today. I just want somebody to pay me for singing a song. <laughs> Can somebody tell me what to do? Mm. I just want to know that I, at 3 p.m. I got to be in the theater. And at mm. 5, I do the show. And then I'm done. But no, sometimes it's like, no, it's not like that. Sometimes you wake up, you got to... Um, answer emails. You got to vet, edit videos. You got to work on your show reel. You got to work on some songs. You got to put your book together. Mm. You have to, you know, um, learn new stuff. You got to learn new scripts. There's a there's a show that's, that's coming up. You have to audition for something else. There's other auditions. It's always something going on. And I and I I get intoxicated by that. Sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming, but I get excited about it. like I'm always in the middle of five different projects. Some of them are working. Some of them are paying. A lot of them are not, but a lot of them are, I do it for the love, and a lot of them I do it with friends, and I, you'd be surprised how one thing can lead to another. And speaking of obligations, you know, Mig knows he has to keep at it and take care of business, and you do have an obligation to who you're serving. You do have a duty to help uh, the world with your art and other artists, and I'm going to take you to Joanna Finch, one of my most recent guests, a very eccentric musician. And she offers this little tidbit about your duty as an artist. It, that's what I like the most about it, I think, because I have been gifted with a lot of songs. I've been gifted with these voices and these characters. And I believe it's my duty. I believe it's any artist's duty from the divine, from you know, what made us, the molecules that are dancing around us. It's our duty to share our light. It's our duty to to inspire and, and help others to be courageous and express what's beautiful and real in them. Mm -hmm. And this next quote, I think, complements what Joanna had to say. This is Stacy Sabarsky, my first guest of 2020. And she runs a theater in Tampa, Florida. And here's what she has to say 
about helping out our fellow creatives and artists. I thought it was kind of a cool idea. You know, if you're kind of on the at the top of the building and, you know, and and you're successful, in other words, you know, it's sort of your responsibility to send that elevator back down and bring people up with you, you mm. know? A really good one. <laughs> I like that. never heard that one. Mm. That is so billboard worthy. That is a great quote. And speaking of which, that brings me to one of my most recent guests, Robin Finney. Young woman who's an entrepreneur, a solo traveler, and a model who's made it her mission to go to as many countries as possible and have photo shoots. And she's been to quite a few. And she offers this little thing about uh, being creative and showing up. Here's what she has to say. Um, There's a lot of creators out there um, online. More people are starting side hustles, side businesses outside of their day job to have a creative outlet. And I think it's just the reality of life too. Like I've kind of, I've been sitting with this the past two weeks since Kobe Bryant died Mm. and thinking just, you know, he showed up every day. Mm. He continued to craft his art. And even when he didn't feel like it, he still showed up. And so that's been my reminder lately is show up. The Mm. more alive we are, the more it gives permission for others to become alive. There's another billboard worthy quote. The more we're alive, the more we give permission for others to be alive. Not just billboards that should be on posters, uh, t-shirts, bumper stickers, I think. But anyway, let's move on to some of the artists that have been in the game a very, very long time. Starting with Jeff Alagu. He's a musician based in Long Island, New York. My wife introduced him to me. And Jeff has been in the music biz since his teen years. Never has had to hold down a day job. And he's had his own band, The Tall Boys, toured with Taylor Dane and the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and is now part of the CoverGirl Band, performing all throughout Long Island. And so he's been keeping things in perspective and he offers really good sage advice about living within your means. Listen. You know, but you got to be smart. I mean, you know, the the industry is like anything in the arts. You can't be an idiot. You have to live within your means, you know, and Mm -hmm. save your money and all that stuff. You have to be careful about what you're doing. If you do that, I think you can do whatever you want to do. But a lot of people don't realize that. They Mm -hmm. just take out loans and spend money and before they know it they're screwed and that's when what pushes you out of the arts field and into something else because you've you've gone way overboard or you think you need a lifestyle that you know um you know is 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 not going to be uh generated from what you're doing as an artist so it, it there's compromises of course you know and i have to say if it's got to do with who you're with too my wife is great um, she's amazing and she gets it. You know, it wasn't like she was pushing to do something that we couldn't afford to do. So, you know, that's part of it. You know, that's a big part of it. It's smart. It's very smart. And we are going now to guest number two, Dean McCrane. He is the potter who hails from Hawaii and does remarkable, astonishing work with colored clay. And he, uh, offers this up about what keeps him going. Why does he stick with his art through all these years? Well, it's very rewarding, too. I mean, there's a huge positive. Making something with your hands and and birthing it from a kiln, from a firing, uh, it's like having kids. It's incredibly rewarding, you know, especially when you make something good. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, you're lucky if you get one piece in a hundred that's Mm. actually good i mean you you know you don't have much judgment but um but that one piece you know that'll that'll hook you you know you do one piece that comes out great and you're like oh man i gotta do this again Mm. it's kind of a drug in a way because it has that sort of i don't know in psychology you call it intermittent reward 
in, in uh, behavioral conditioning. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, absolutely. You know, intermittent reward is the most powerful form of behavior, behavioral conditioning, right? Yeah. And uh, that, that's what you get. You get one, you know, first you get one in 100, and then maybe if you're, you know, you stick with it, you'll get one in 10, and, you know, and then after a while you might get one in five, and then after a while you get, you know, two out of three or something like that. If you don't get too adventurous, every time, you know, you want to experiment, every time you experiment, boom, you're back to one in 100. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, I've had deep conversations and inspiring moments here on the podcast, but there's also been some funny moments some you've never heard before and uh some are part of a uh, episode i did with elkie let's start with her because there was a moment we were talking about horror horror movies and the word horror came out a little differently here we go take a listen and have a good chuckle on me um i kind of stepped aside from that just i was doing what i felt like doing at the time because i like several different genres you know not just horror but i but i love horror did i just say horror, horror. horror. it's a horror <laughs> you know, but um it's a jewish uh moita moita show <laughs> yeah Boy, horror. Horror. yeah and then i have a, a couple of other things in the pipeline um which are i wouldn't say horror or even horror horror, maybe. <laughs> horror. they're not really horrors <laughs> but they're more like thrillers <laughs> The horror. The horror. <laughs> I love it. I can't get that out of my head sometimes. And finally, this is a good outtake I have when I interviewed Rena Alvarez, the photographer here in Tampa, Florida, who I met at my day job. And I think I was trying to get recording and I just kind of stumbled over my words and just went with it because I knew she had a good sense of humor and this is what came out of that. All right, now we're officially recording. Now let me save my shit to get. Let me save my fucking <laughs> shit the right fucking way here. <laughs> Throw me a fucking bone here. Oh my gosh. On Thaco That's Thursday. So Am I being long winded or no? Is it? Oh my it god, she's going on so fucking long. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I have to edit this episode like a bitch. No, it's fine. <laughs> I wish I made a video recording of this phone call. Oh, that's the beauty of podcasting. You can stop and start over again if things just don't work out. But I kept those because I thought they were funny. All right. Now we're getting down to three questions I usually ask at the end of every episode. First, I like to ask my artists, do you think we have an artist inside of us? And I took four answers that I really think encapsulate that whole question starting off with rebecca flott's answer a hundred percent yes 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 yes, yes, yes <laughs> i had a yes. feeling that would be the answer <laughs> <laughs> i really believe it you know paulo picasso says um every child is an artist the problem is that when we grow up we forget this right we we forget this I really believe that everybody has a creation inside of them. If there's a book, if there's a, a way of speaking, a podcast, a painting, a storybook, a, a cookbook. How many of us are my friends? They cook incredible food and they don't even put a recipe into a format of a book to try to sell that. They don't believe that they can do it. But if you only you believe the places that you can go and the people that you can touch and the life that you can leave. It's incredible. You can be your own worst enemy or your own best friend. <laughs> you choose. At the end of the day, the choice is in your hands. You Absolutely. choose. Next up is Rebecca McGill, a woodworker who offers this answer about an artist inside of us. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, Brene Brown talks about how so many of us have art scars and creativity scars where somebody who probably meant well said something that resonated with us saying that we weren't good enough or not creative enough mm. or we probably shouldn't 
be the one singing and let everyone else sing, you know, like I, 